Hey guys, welcome to my absolute beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. I'm going to start off uh, this video with uh, talking about some of the basic features and uh, things that you can do in the uh, vehicle assembly building, which is actually, let's go back here, which is this building here on the main screen. So you click on it. Uh, the first thing that it's going to show you is all the different uh, pods that you can put on your spacecraft. Uh, it's also going to show you, these aren't really pods, these are uh, probes, so they actually don't have any kerbals in them, but they can still be uh, used to control your spacecraft. It's just that you're going to need to keep them uh, electrified with electricity, or else they'll just die and you'll be like, oh, now I can't control anything and it's just going to float off into space. Uh, these two here won't actually be in your game if you have a stock uh, game because it's from the MechJeb mod. They're just MechJeb pods. But uh, what I'm going to start off with is the one person command pod Mark II. And that'll just hold one Kerbal in here. And then after you click on which basic pod that you want to use, it's going to put it in the vehicle assembly building. And then it's going to give you access to all of the different parts that you can choose. So we've got um, you can actually add on more pods after that by clicking on them. Uh, you can do use uh, WSAD to rotate the parts around. Also, I think you can use Q and E to like roll the parts like that. Yeah, so you can you can click there and you just match up green to green, obviously, and it'll put. Uh, another pod on there if you want um, that's kind of more for more advanced spacecraft making but uh, it, it tends to be kind of useful once you're once you want to do some stuff like multiple ships and putting space stations up and stuff like that um, a couple of the basics of the VAB as far as control goes if you right click and hold and then drag it'll rotate around um, that's actually the same as when you're actually flying and then if you uh, left click is basically just for um, clicking and dropping parts and stuff so you click on a part you don't have to hold it or anything drop it click it drop it uh, so I'm gonna I'm basically just gonna create a like really basic uh, rocket right now I'm not gonna launch it until probably the next video I'm gonna show you guys how to get into orbit but if you click on uh, Basically there's two different kinds of parts, actually there's kind of three now with like the probe size parts which are really small, but um, if we're talking manned stuff we've got the one meter um, diameter parts which are the same dimensions across as like the one man pod, and then we've also got the, uh, I believe they're two meter, two meter across parts, two or three meter across parts, and uh, those are more kind of designed for uh, the Mark 1-2 command pod, which will hold three Kerbals, but um, you can you, know, you can mix and match them. It really doesn't, doesn't matter too much, except for you know how well your stuff stays together and how much fuel you need. So you can see from the description, if you hover over, that it's got um, uh, two types of resources in it. It's got liquid fuel. It's got 360 units of liquid fuel and 440 units of oxidizer. When you're using a rocket, as opposed to like a jet engine, you have to have liquid fuel and oxidizer because it has to be like self-contained within the rocket. If you're using a jet engine, actually it gets the oxidizer from the air, which is oxygen, so you don't have to have any oxidizer. It'll still, if you if you connect a jet engine up to like one of these uh, fuel tanks, it'll just use the liquid fuel, it won't use any of the oxidizer. So you'll still have the weight of the oxidizer in there too. And it, so it's, it's, it's better to use just the jet fuel fuselage, which is this one I wanna say, yeah. These ones have uh, two, just 240 units of liquid fuel. This one just has 150 units of liquid fuel. And it's the same liquid fuel for jets and rockets. It's just that um, the rockets also use oxidizer, so you don't have to be in the atmosphere to use them. And, and, and the jet engines are way more efficient, but I'll, I'll go over that later. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put uh, one of these, and usually the, the, the parts will... Actually, I've already got one right here. But one of the all the parts... Um, kind of are derivatives of each other so you can see that this one that the one that I picked is three of these size 
pieces and it's two of these size pieces so you can you can use three of these two of these one of these doesn't really matter except for like structural reasons because the more joints you have the more likely it's going to be that stuff is going to fall apart and and warp and bend and all that which isn't really desirable um so we're gonna put uh, let's say three of these on here because i'm gonna be using it in my next video to actually do a launch we'll put three of those in a row that will give me plenty of fuel to get into orbit and then you need to pick an engine to put on the bottom so we've got like the big size like the three meter engine um we've got two different um engines that are this size you'll notice that the main difference here is that the nozzle on the end is different and that's because um the smaller one is thrust vectored whereas the bigger one is not thrust vectored so i'm gonna use the bigger one it has more thrust but thrust vectoring basically means that you can steer with the engine like it it's called gimbling it will like move the engine back and forth to, to provide a little bit of steering power um so now we've got that, but we're not going to be able to get quite where we want to do with just these pieces that we have on here. So actually, if you take this and drop, you can see that it actually took everything with it. And you can just drop it there and kind of set it aside. Um, the next thing that I'm going to want to put on here actually is uh, I'm going to go to structural and I'm going to go down to the stack decoupler and put one of those on there. So that'll actually let... Um, pieces kind of fall apart from other pieces uh, at your say so so you'll press space in the in the uh, staging view or in, in the launch view and and it'll fall apart that's gonna be important later but that's just to tell you what that does um, and then underneath it I'm gonna go to control tab not control tab but the control tab and take advanced SAS module and stick one of those underneath there this will this is kind of like an autopilot it's not quite a mech jeb mod level autopilot but it's an autopilot it'll let you hit the t button or the t key and the rocket will attempt to keep the whatever heading that you were on um heading and pitch that you were on when you hit the t key so it'll kind of just tend to keep the rocket straight and it's really useful especially if you're doing like manual um launches and all that so now we've got this um my staging is pretty good yeah so you can see from the staging down here that the first thing it's, it goes from the bottom up so the first thing that's going to happen when i hit space is that the engine's going to fire next time that i hit space this decoupler which you can see it's kind of highlighting it up here the decoupler is going to decouple so this section down here is going to take and separate itself from the pod um, the next thing that I want to do is go to the utility tab and take and find the Mark 16 parachute, which is like the one meter size parachute. You can see that both of these parachutes are um, a lot bigger. They're the three meter size parachutes. And the difference is that this one, the XL, is um, like more of this type of parachute, where it's like an actual parachute. Whereas this is kind of a drogue chute that's kind of just mostly there to stabilize you versus like actually slowing you down a whole lot. So now we've got a parachute so that we can re-enter the atmosphere, but you'll notice in the staging down here that uh, the parachute is in the same stage as the decoupler, so that means that as soon as you hit the decoupler, the parachute's also going to try to open, which you don't necessarily want, because we're probably going to be hitting the decoupler while we're still in space, so you don't necessarily want the parachute to be going off there. So, when you hover over it, you'll see plus and minus on each of the stages, so you can add, hit plus to add a stage, and then we'll drag the decoupler down to this one. Now we've got three stages, so it's going to go engine, uh, decoupler, and then parachute. So that's pretty much all that we actually need, but what I'm going to do is take and go over to the aerodynamic tab, and we're going to go um, over to, what did I want to put on here? A, uh, I wanted to do a winglet, I think. Yes, winglet. So we're going to take a winglet, and we're going to put a winglet on here. Now that's not very good to have just one winglet, obviously, that's not how that's not how rockets work, that's not how arrows would work, you know, it's pretty stupid to just have one. So you don't want to have to sit there and go, oh, let's see, how do I, how do I make this even, oh no, this isn't even, I'm an idiot. I mean, that is even, I'm not that much of an idiot, I guess, 
but um, the easiest thing to do is oh shoot I just screwed that up the easiest thing to do just a second the easiest thing to do is to go down here which is the symmetry tool and if you click on it it'll do uh, two-way symmetry three-way symmetry four-way symmetry six-way symmetry eight-way symmetry so let's do three-way symmetry and then when you place it it actually automatically places um, symmetrically three different um, sets of the same thing and when you take them off it'll take them all off at the same time too so that's done um, the SAS module up here is actually going to use these um, use these fins to do steering and uh, keeping everything straight while we're going up they, they might not do that on the actual launch in the next video but um, on more complex rockets things tend to wobble and get out of place and it'll actually help to correct that um, so stay tuned for the next video. The next video is going to be um, showing you how to get this thing up into a basic circular orbit, and then we're going to go from there. Thanks for watching.